Tonight, dinner comes from the Ukraine with Chicken Kiev. Hey everyone and welcome back to my kitchen. Tonight we're making Chicken Kiev, which if you couldn't tell by the name, was created by a Ukrainian chef. And in light of that, I wanted to take a few minutes just to highlight the suffering currently experienced by the people of Ukraine. We are all citizens of this world and because of that, we need to help each other out. If you would like to help the people of Ukraine, you can always donate to the UN's Crisis Fund. I will leave a link in the description below and while I don't want to be political on this channel, I can't stand bullies. And this one is the definition of a bully. Now on to our regular scheduled programming. Okay, let's get to the reason you clicked on this video. The cooking. As always, the ingredients list is on the screen and the full recipe can be found at the channel's website, homestylecookingwithjen.com. And if you like this video so far, go ahead and hit the thumbs up button. It really does help out the channel with the algorithm. And if you enjoy recipe videos, I post multiple times a week. If you always want to be up to date with what I'm cooking, hit the subscribe button and don't forget the notification bell. And as always, if you have any food related questions, leave me a comment down below. I read all of the comments and I'll get to as many questions as I can. Who knows, you may be featured on a future video. All right, let's get started. The first thing we need to do is chop the parsley for the compound butter. Chopping parsley is pretty simple. All you do is run your knife through the leaves until it begins to look like mowed grass. Do this carefully. You don't want to chop your fingers, but it's more cathartic than complicated. I'm going to speed this up a little bit so you don't have to constantly watch me chop parsley. Now that the parsley is chopped, it's time to add the minced garlic. Now normally I use fresh garlic, but it was looking kind of sketch at the grocery store. So I'm just using the jarred version this time. Either one works, it tastes just fine. And last but not least, we add the butter. And yeah, sometimes it sticks to the little paper. The only thing left to do is to mix our butter mixture together. Take your time with this. Because of the parsley, it might take a little bit of working the butter to get everything Everything well combined and all of the ingredients evenly distributed throughout the mixture. I'm going to speed this up a little bit because watching me stir things might be a little boring. Now that the butter is completely combined, it's time to form them into little discs. What you want to do is take a portion of the butter on your fork or your spoon and then place them into your hand and form it into a one inch puck basically. Be careful doing this. You don't want to handle the butter too much. You, the warmth from your hands will begin to melt it and it's already been worked quite a bit. So just be careful with the timing. Once you get all of your discs formed, just set them aside on the counter until you are ready to serve your chicken Kiev. Now I did have to put mine in the fridge just because of the filming lights. I did not want melted butter before it started melting on the chicken. Now that the butter is done, it's time to move on to a more stress relieving portion of the video with the chicken. So we're going to pound the chicken out till it's about a third of an inch thick. The easiest way to do this is to put a piece of chicken in a storage bag and just pound the heck out of it. Now, I'm using an older meat tenderizer. This thing is cast iron, I think, or cast metal. I don't think they make these anymore, but they're pretty easy to find. You can get them in metal or wood. You can get them at Walmart, Amazon pretty much anywhere that sells kitchen items. But just pound away until you get a nice even piece of chicken and it looks pretty pulverized. And then just repeat for every piece of chicken. Now I will speed up me beating up the second piece just because you've already seen me pound one piece of chicken. It's pretty much the exact same thing. Like I said earlier, it's pretty cheap therapy for minor frustrations. Oh, and I almost forgot. Make sure you do this on a separate cutting board than the one that you use to cut your vegetables. We don't want any cross-contamination. Okay, now I'm going to shut up and let the music roll while I pound out the second piece of chicken. Now 
that both pieces of chicken are pounded out and you've gotten all your frustrations out, it's time to make a breading station. Before we make the breading station, we need to prepare the skillet. So over medium high heat, place a large nonstick skillet and add your oil. We want to bring the oil up to temperature while the chicken is being breaded so we don't have greasy chicken. To make the wet side of your breading station, add your water and flour to a small bowl and then give it a good stir. You want the water and flour to create a slurry. For the dry side of the breading station, add your breadcrumbs and chop up some parsley and mix them together until they're well combined. You may want to add a little salt to your dry mixture, but that's completely up to you. It's more a matter of taste. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch me chop parsley again. Now it's time to bread the chicken. It's important to season the meat before we bread it. And I do this by simply adding a little salt and pepper into the storage bag that I pounded the chicken out on. This helps save a lot of mess and I don't have to dirty up yet another dish. Once the chicken is seasoned, it's time to start dredging. And as always, we start with the wet side first. So just keep flipping the chicken over until it is well coated and transfer it to the breadcrumbs. We want to press the chicken into the breadcrumbs to make sure they adhere to the meat. This is very important because we need the crust to stay intact in the oil. Just keep flipping it over until the chicken is completely breaded and it is ready for the skillet. Now it's time to cook the chicken. Place your breaded chicken in your hot oil and let it set for three to five minutes on each side. We want to cook the chicken for a total of 10 to 14 minutes to make sure it's done completely through. However, the rotation every three to five minutes will make sure that it doesn't get too brown. I cook my chicken one at a time, but I have a household of two, so it's more feasible to do it that way. However, if you have a larger family, you may still need to cook your chicken in batches to make sure that you don't crowd the pan. Just use a much larger skillet than I'm using here, and of course you'll have to increase the amount of oil you use. After three to five minutes, give the chicken a good flip and continue cooking for another three to five minutes until the chicken is done all the way through. I'm going to speed this up so you don't have to watch chicken cooking in real time. Once the chicken is done, it's time to plate, and it couldn't be any simpler. Just add a piece of chicken to your favorite plate and top it with one of your butter discs and add your side. Tonight, we're having roasted green beans. So that's it. I hope everyone stays happy, healthy, and as always, well-fed. And if you've made it till the end, please consider donating to the people of Ukraine through the UN Crisis Fund.